Introduction to Computer A computer is a general-purpose device that can be programmed to carry out a finite set of arithmetic or logical operations. Or other words you can say computers are machines that perform tasks or calculations according to a set of instructions or programs. Computer System Computer system consists of hardware and software. Hardware Hardware, in the computer word, refers to physical components that make up the computer system. There are many different kinds of hardware that can be installed inside and connected to the outside of a computer. Here are some common individual computer hardware components that you'll often find inside a modern computer. Here is some common hardware that you might find connected to the outside of a computer. O motherboard. O central processing unit CPU. O random access memory. O power supply. O video card. O hard drive HDD. O DVD drive. O solid state drive SSD. O optical drive. Input device. It is used to input data into a computer system. O keyboard. O mouse. O scanner. O analog modem. O joysticks. O webcam. O microphone. O tape drive. O zip drive. Unit 1. Computer fundamental. Output device. It is used to see the output of your work. O monitors. O printers. O projectors. O speakers. Software. Software is generic term for organized collections of computer data and instructions, often broken into two major categories, system software and application software. System software area. System software that provides the basic non-task specific functions of the computer. System software is responsible for controlling, integrating and managing the individual hardware components of a computer system so that other software and the users of the system see it as functional unit without having to be concerned with low-level details such as transferring data from memory to disk or rendering text onto a display. Generally system software consists of an operating system and some fundamental utilities such as disk formatters, file manager, display managers, text editors, user authentication login, and management tools and networking and device control tools. Application software area. Application software which is used by users to accomplish specific tasks. Application software, on the other hand, is used to accomplish specific tasks other than just running the computer system. Application software may consist of a single program, such as an image viewer, a small collection of programs that work closely together to accomplish a task, such as a spreadsheet or text processing system, a large collection of related but independent programs and package that have a common user interface or shared data format, such as Microsoft Office, which consists of closely integrated word processor, spreadsheet, database etc., or a software systems such as a database management system, which is a collection of fundamental programs that may provide some service to a variety of other independent applications. Introduction Modern general purpose computers, including personal computers and mainframes, have an operating system to run other programs, such as application software. Examples of operating systems for personal computers include Microsoft Windows, Mac OS and Darwin Unix, and Linux. The lowest level of any operating system is its kernel. This is the first layer of software loaded into memory. When a system boots or starts up, the kernel provides access to various common core services to all other system and application programs. These services include, but are not limited to, disk access, memory management, task scheduling, and access to other hardware devices. As well as the kernel, an operating system is often distributed with tools for programs to display and manage a graphical user interface. Although Windows and the Macintosh have these tools built into the operating system, as well as utility programs for tasks such as managing files and configuring the operating system, they are also often distributed with application software that does not relate directly to the operating system's core function, but which the operating system distributor finds advantageous to supply with the operating system. The delineation between the operating system and application software is not precise, and is occasionally subject to controversy. From commercial or legal points of view, the delineation can 
depend on the contexts of the interests involved. For example, one of the key questions in the United States v. Microsoft antitrust trial was whether Microsoft's web browser was part of its operating system, or whether it was a separable piece of application software. Like the term operating system divided by itself, the question of what exactly should form the OCRNL divided by is subject to some controversy, with debates over whether things like file systems should be included in the kernel. Various camps advocate microkernels, monolithic kernels, and so on. Operating systems are used on most, but not all, computer systems. The simplest computers, including the smallest embedded systems and many of the first computers did not have operating systems. Instead, they relied on the application programs to manage the minimal hardware themselves, perhaps with the aid of libraries developed for the purpose. Commercially supplied operating systems are present on virtually all modern devices described as computers, from personal computers to mainframes, as well as mobile computers such as PBAs and mobile phones. Unit 2 Operating System Histories of Operating Systems An operating system OS is a software program that manages the hardware and software resources of a computer. The OS performs basic tasks, such as controlling and allocating memory, prioritizing the processing of instructions, controlling input and output devices, facilitating networking, and managing files. The first computers did not have operating systems. However, software tools for managing the system and simplifying the use of hardware appeared very quickly afterwards and gradually expanded in scope. By the early 1960s, commercial computer vendors were supplying quite extensive tools for streamlining the development, scheduling, and execution of jobs on batch processing systems. Examples were produced by Univac and Control Data Corporation, amongst others. Through the 1960s, Several major concepts were developed, driving the development of operating systems. The development of the IBM System Flash 360 produced a family of mainframe computers available in widely differing capacities and price points, for which a single operating system OS Flash 360 was planned, rather than developing AD Hawk programs for every individual model. This concept of a single OS spanning an entire product line was crucial for the success of System Flash 360. And, in fact, IBM's current mainframe operating systems are distant descendants of this original system. Applications written for the OS Flash 360 can still be run on modern machines. OS Flash 360 also contained another important advance, the development of the hard disk permanent storage device which IBM called the ASD. Another key development was the concept of time sharing, the idea of sharing the resources of expensive computers amongst multiple computer users interacting in real time with the system. Time sharing allowed all of the users to have the illusion of having exclusive access to the machine. The Multics time sharing system was the most famous of a number of new operating systems developed to take advantage of the concept. Multics, particularly was an inspiration to a number of operating systems developed in the 1970s, notably Unix. Another commercially popular mini-computer operating system was BMS. The first microcomputers did not have the capacity or need for the elaborate operating systems that had been developed for mainframes and minis. Minimalistic operating systems were developed. One notable early operating system was CP-M, which was supported on many early microcomputers and was largely cloned in creating MS-DOS, which became wildly popular as the operating system chosen for the IBM PC. IBM's version of it was called IBM DOS or PC DOS its successors making Microsoft one of the world's most profitable companies. The major alternative throughout the 1980s in the microcomputer market was Mac OS, tied intimately to the Apple Macintosh computer. By the 1990s, the microcomputer had evolved to the point where, as well as extensive GUI facilities, the robustness and flexibility of operating systems of larger computers became increasingly desirable. Microsoft's response to this change was the development of Windows NT, which served as the basis for Microsoft's entire operating system line starting in 1999. Apple rebuilt their operating system on top of the Unix core as Mac OS X, released in 2001. 
hobbyist developed three implementations of Unix, assembled with the tools from the new project, also became popular versions based on the Linux kernel are by far the most popular, with the BSD-derived Unixes holding a small portion of the server market. The growing complexity of embedded devices has a growing trend to use embedded operating systems on them. Operating System V Overview An operating system OS is an intermediary between users and computer hardware. It provides users an environment in which a user can execute programs conveniently and efficiently. In technical terms, it is a software which manages hardware. An operating system controls the allocation of resources and services such as memory, processors, devices and information. Definition An operating system is a program that acts as an interface between the user and the computer hardware and controls the execution of all kinds of programs. Following that are some of important functions of an operating system. O memory management. O processor management. O device management. O file management. O security. O control over system performance. O job accounting. O error detecting aids. O coordination between other software and users. Memory management. Memory management refers to management of primary memory or main memory. Main memory is a Large array of words or bytes where each word or byte has its own address. Main memory provides a fast storage that can be accessed directly by the CPU. So for a program to be executed, it must be in the main memory. Operating system does the following activities for memory management. Keeps tracks of primary memory i.e. which part of it are in use by whom and which parts are not in use. In multiprogramming, OS decides which process will get memory space when and how much. Allocates the memory when the process requests it to do so. Deallocates the memory when the process no longer needs it or has been terminated. Processor management. In multiprogramming environment, OS decides which process gets the processor when and how much time it needs. This function is called process scheduling. Operating system does the following activities. For processor management. Keeps tracks of processor and status of processes. Program responsible for this task is known as traffic. Controller. Allocates the processor CPU to a process. D allocates processor when processor is no longer required. Device management. OS manages device communication via their respective drivers. Operating system does the following activities for device management. Keeps tracks of all devices. Program responsible for this task is known as the I slash O controller. Decides which process gets the device when and for how much time. Allocates the device in an efficient way. D allocates devices. File management. A file system is normally organized into directories for easy navigation and usage. These directories may contain files and other directions. Operating system does the following activities for file management. Keeps track of information, location, uses, status, etc. The collective facilities are often known as file. System. Decides who gets the resources. Allocates the resources. Deallocates the resources. Other important activities aid. Following that are some of the important activities that operating system does. Security V by means of password and similar other techniques. Preventing unauthorized access to programs and data. Control over system performance, recording delays between request for a service and response from the system. Job accounting v keeping track of time and resources used by various jobs and users. Error detecting aids v production of dumps, traces, error messages and other debugging and error detecting aids. Coordination between other softwares and users. Coordination and assignment of compilers. Interpreters assemblers and other software to the various users of the computer systems. Windows Operating System Introduction The Windows XP Operating System is a graphical user interface GUI developed by the Microsoft Corporation. The purpose of this document is to assist the user in learning the basic fundamentals of the Windows XP Operating System. The introduction to Windows XP Workshop is recommended for people unfamiliar with computers and will serve as a foundation for the other windows related workshops basic terminology monitor the television light screen that displays the visual representation of the computer's contents 
Floppy disk. Storage device used for storing small programs or data. Most diskettes are 3.5 divided by in size and can store 1.4 megabytes megabytes of information. A new kind of diskette, called a zip disk, can hold as much as 250 megabytes or more. Hard disk. Storage device found in the computer which is used for storing instructions and data. Hard disks are capable of storing gigabytes GB of data thousands of megabytes. CD-ROM. Compact disk read only memory storage media. CD-ROMs have a similar appearance to audio CDS. Computer programs are often stored on these disks because of their large storage capacity. CDR slash RW. A compact disk, similar to a CD-ROM except it can have information recorded on it. Some types are capable of being recorded multiple times. RAM, random access memory. RAM is found inside the computer and is used to temporarily store instructions and data for processing. Mouse, a handheld device which controls cursor movements on the screen. A button on the mouse can be used to select program slash files by clicking once on the program slash file icon. It can also be used to launch programs slash files by rapidly clicking twice on the icons double clicking left click pressing the left button of the mouse once used for selecting icons and opening programs right click pressing the right button of the mouse once used for opening contextual menus single click clicking once with the left mouse button on the icon to select the icon double click Clicking twice with the left mouse button on the icon to activate the icon. Activating the icon will run the program or open the file that is associated with the icon. Drag slash drag and drop. This is used to move files around on the computer. It may also be used to copy files from hard drive to floppy drive and vice versa. To drag a file, left click and hold down the button. Move the icon to the new location and let go of the mouse button. Network Login To log on to the network, press the OK button at the login screen. You now have access to the various programs that are network accessible. Desktop The computer screen that is displayed is called the desktop. As you move the mouse around with your hand, you see the mouse pointer move accordingly on the computer desktop. The icons on the desktop correspond to commonly used programs found in the computer these icons are actually shortcuts to the programs themselves and double-clicking the icons will launch the programs automatically. You can also use the right mouse button to open up different commands. Right-click on an empty area of the desktop and arrange the icons by name. My Computer The My Computer icon will show a listing of the computer's disk drives, network drives, and system files slash folders. Local files or folders are found on the computer's drives here as remote files or folders are found on the network drives. Double-clicking on the drive letter will open the contents of that drive. You can also right-click on the icons to do advanced functions. Title bar, menu bar, tool bar. The title bar shows the name of which window you are viewing. Minimize slash maximize slash restore slash close. Every window in the XP operating system will have a series of buttons on the top right corner of the title bar. Close Maximize Minimize Restore Windows My Documents The My Documents folder is the default folder where most of the Windows XP programs will save your files. Task Bar Time and date are found on the right hand side of the task bar and can be changed by double clicking on the numbers that display the time. Start Menu the Start menu contains shortcuts to the most commonly used programs that are found on your computer. Clicking Start Greater Than Programs Greater Than Accessories Greater Than Calculator will launch the calculator program. If you know the name of the program you want to open, go to Start Greater Than Run and type in the program's name. For example, if you want to open the calculator program, go to Start Greater Than Run and type in the name Calc. Click the OK button. New File. Go to Start Greater Than Run and type Explorer. Click the OK button. In the Explorer window, select File Greater Than New Greater Than Microsoft Word document. Name it and click the OK button. Open File. Open the file you just created by double-clicking on it. 
you can also open the file from the menu bar. By selecting File Greater Than Open. With the new file open, enter your name in the open area of the Microsoft Word document. Save as. Select File Greater Than Save as. Enter your name as the file name. Click on the down arrow where it says to save as type. Select to save the file rich text document. Click save and close the file. Note, by saving the text file as the rich text format, you are able to open this file on any type of computer and work on it even if they do not have the Microsoft Word software installed on the machine. Furthermore, saving it this way allowed you to make a backup copy of the file that was created. Making backup copies of files is one of the best practices a computer user can do. Remember to make regular backup copies of your important files and keep the backups in a safe place. Copy Another way to make a backup copy of your files would be to O locate the file you want to copy in My Computer or Windows Explorer. O select the file you want to copy by clicking once on the file. O select Edit from the toolbar and click on Copy. O select Edit from the toolbar and click Paste. O you now have a copy of the file you selected. You can also right click on the file you want to copy and left click on the Copy command. Now move to an empty area of the window you are currently in and right click that spot. Select Paste. Unzip. Note, the zipped file is a compressed file that was created by a program to save disk space. Windows XP has an automatic unzipping utility that will allow you to open zipped files on disk. Place the floppy disk that was loaned to you at the beginning of the workshop in the floppy disk drive. In the Explorer window, select My Computer and click on 3 floppy A drive. Double click on the file text underscore zip dot zip dot. You can drag and drop this file to the My Documents folder. Move the mouse pointer over the file, left click once on the file and while holding your finger down, drag the mouse over so the pointer will be on top of the My Documents folder and let go of the file by taking your finger off of the mouse. Print. Open the new file and select Print from the file menu. Close the file. Note. Each computer lab on campus will have a different print dialog box. Press the OK button and a lab assistant will be available to help you with your print out. Delete. From the menu bar, select File Greater Than Delete. Click the Yes button. Recycle Bin. Locate the Recycle Bin icon on the desktop. Find the file you just deleted and select it by clicking on it once. From the menu bar, select File Greater Than Restore. The file will have been restored to the directory it was deleted from. If you do not remember which directory the file was in when it was deleted, you can search for it by using the search feature. Note, university machines will not restore a file after the machine has been restarted. Search. To search for the file that was just restored, click the Start Menu button, and select Search Greater Than for File or Folders. There are various ways to search for files and folders. You are able to search by file name or words found in the file you are looking for. You can search specific areas of your hard drive or for files that was created or modified on a certain date. Test some different ways of searching to see which one works best for you. Also, the most recent files that were opened will be found in Start Menu the Documents. Help The Help and Support Center can be a vital source of information. Click the Start menu and select Help and Support. You can type in a word or phrase to search for or select topics that might be useful. Try typing the word Restore Antivirus. Locate the Norton Antivirus icon on the right-hand side of the taskbar and double-click it. Insert the disk we loan you into the floppy drive. Select the option of Scan disk the floppy disk. There should be a check mark next to the floppy disk. Press the button. The scan will complete and tell you whether or not there is a virus on the disk. If a virus is found, follow the on-screen instructions to disinfect. You may also contact one of our student lab assistants for help. When scanning is complete, close the open window and exit the program. Log off flash shutdown flash restart. To restart your computer or turn your computer off, click the Start Menu button and select Shut Down A. You will now have the option to log off the computer, turn your computer off or restart the computer.
Select what you want to do and click the OK button. Alternatively, pressing Ctrl Alt Del hold down the Ctrl key, the Alt key, and the Delete key on the keyboard simultaneously will bring up these options also. Pressing the Log Off button will prompt you if you want to end your Windows session. This will close down all programs you had open and will make the computer available for a new user. Pressing the shutdown button will ask if you want to turn off or restart the system. If you restart the system, the computer will refresh all settings and computer memory will be restored for a new user. Concepts Web servers and web browsers are communicating client-server computer programs for distributing documents and information, generally called web data, over the Internet. Web data are marked up in the HTML language for presentation and interaction with people in web browsers. Each web server uses an IP address or domain name as well as a port number for its identification. People use web browsers to send data requests to web servers with the HTTP protocol, and the web servers running on server computers either retrieve the requested data from local disks or generate the data on the flight, mark up the data in HTML and send the resulting HTML files back to the web browsers to render. Apache, Tomcat and IIS are popular web server programs, and IE and Firefox are popular web browsers. What is Internet? The Internet is essentially a global network of computing resources. You can't think about the Internet as a physical collection of routers and circuits as a set of shared resources or even as an attitude about interconnecting and intercommunication. Some common definitions given in the past include so a network of networks based on the TCP slash IP communications protocol. So a community of people who use and develop those networks. So a community of people who use and develop those networks. Unit 3. Concept about web technology. Usenet News, the distributed bulletin board that offers a combination news and discussion service on thousands of topics. World Wide Web WWW Hypertext Interface to Internet Information Resources What is WWW? This stands for World Wide Web. A technical definition of the World Wide Web is all the resources and users on the Internet that are using the Hypertext Transfer Protocol HTTP. A broader definition comes from the organization that web inventor Tim Berners-Lee helped found, the World Wide Web. Consortium W3C. The World Wide Web is the universe of network accessible information, an embodiment of human knowledge. In simple terms, the World Wide Web is a way of exchanging information between computers on the Internet, tying them together into a vast collection of interactive multimedia resources. What is HTTP? This stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is the protocol being used to transfer hypertext documents. That makes the world worldwide possible. The standard web address such as http colon slash slash www.yahoo.com slash is called a URL and here the prefix HTTP indicates its protocol. What is URL? URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator and is used to specify addresses on the World Wide Web. A URL is the fundamental network identification for any resource connected to the web, e.g., hypertext, pages, images, and sound files. The URL will have the following format. The protocol specifies how information from the link is transferred. The protocol used for web resources is Hypertext Transfer Protocol HTTP. Other protocols compatible with most web browsers include FTP, Telnet, Newsgroups, and go for the protocol is followed by a colon two slashes and then the domain name the domain name is the computer on which the resource is located links to particular files or subdirectories may be further specified after the domain name the directory names are separated by single forward flashes what is website Currently you are on our website http colon slash slash www.tutorialspoint.com which is a collection of various pages written in HTML markup language. This is a location on the web where people can find tutorials on latest technologies. Similar way there is millions of websites available on the web. Each page available 
on the website is called a web page and first page of any website is called home page for that site. What is web server? Every website sits on a computer known as a web server. This server is always connected to the Internet. Every web server that is connected to the Internet is given a unique address made up of a series of four numbers between 0 and 256 separated by periods. For example, 68.178.157.132 are 68.122.35.127. When you register a web address, also known as a domain name, such as tutorials.com you have to specify the IP address of the web server that will host the site. We will see different type of web servers in a separate chapter. What is web browser? Web browsers are software installed on your PC. To access the web you need web browsers, such as Netscape Navigator, Microsoft Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. Currently you must be using any sort of web browser while you are navy editing through my site tutorialspoint.com. On the web, when you navigate through pages of information this is commonly known as browsing or surfing. We will see different type of web browsers in a separate chapter. What is SMTP server? This stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol Server. This server takes care of delivering emails from one server to another server. When you send an email to an email address, it is delivered to its recipient by the SMTP server. What is ISP? This stands for Internet Service Provider. They are the companies who provide you service in terms of Internet connection to connect to the Internet. You will buy space on a web server from any Internet service provider. This space will be used to host your website. What is HTML? This stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is the language in which we write web pages for any website. Even the page you are reading right now is written in HTML. This is a subset of standard generalized markup language SGML for electronic publishing, the specific standard used for the World Wide Web. What is hyperlink? A hyperlink or simply a link is a selectable element in an electronic document that serves as an access point to other electronic resources. Typically, you click a hyperlink to access the linked resource. Familiar hyperlinks include buttons, icons, image maps, and clickable text links. What is DNS? DNS stands for Domain Name System. When someone types in your domain name, www.example.com, your browser will ask the domain name system to find the IP that hosts your site. When you register your domain name, your IP address should be put in a DNS along with your domain name. Without doing it your domain name will not be functioning properly. What is W3C? This stands for World Wide Web Consortium which is an international consortium of companies involved with the Internet and the Web. The W3C was funded in 1994 by Tim Berners-Lee, the original architect of the World Wide Web. The organization's purpose is to develop open standards so that the Web evolves in a single direction rather than being splintered among competing factions. The W3C is the chief standards body for HTTP and HTML. Internet-based services. Some of the basic services available to Internet users are email, a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to communicate with other Internet users around the world. Telnet allows the user to log into a remote computer as though it were a local system. FTP allows the user to transfer virtually every kind of file that can be stored on a computer from one internet connected computer to another programming languages on the internet the capabilities of the internet have been enhanced and extended by using programming languages with HTML these languages have been responsible for the dynamic and interactive nature of the net new languages and language extensions are being developed to increase the usability of the internet on this page I'll provide a brief on some of the important languages that have shaped the Internet over the years. HTML Hypertext Markup Language HTML Hypertext Markup Language is the lingua franca of the Internet. It is the language used to develop web pages. 
hypertext means that some text in the HTML document carries a link to a different location, which can be on the same page or another page. On clicking this hotspot, the viewer is transferred to that location. Markup means that specific portions of a document are marked up to indicate how they should be displayed in the browser. According to purists, HTML is not a language per Southeast, and they are right in one way. HTML simply consists of tags that are placed around elements, which then changes the properties of these enclosed elements. There are hundreds of HTML tags and some of these are proprietary, which means that only some browsers recognize them. CGI The Common Gateway Interface The Common Gateway Interface CGI has been around for a long time. It allows the web server software to communicate with other programs running on the server. These external programs are called CGI scripts or CGI programs and are usually written in Perl or AC. CGI programs are generally used to process information submitted by visitors via a form on a web page. For example, you might use the search form on a website to look for a cars. When you submit your query, the server receives your request, passes it to the CGI program. The program then looks up the search query term in a database and responds with the appropriate result formatted in HTML code. JavaScript Flash JScript JavaScript is a programming language that runs on a web browser. It was developed by the same folks who gave us Netscape and was first implemented in version 2 of the browser. JScript is Microsoft's implementation of JavaScript for Internet Explorer. By the by, JavaScript is not a subset of Java. In fact, the two languages share little in common. Yes, they share a few basic concepts but the syntax is different. And so is the application. Naming their language will have a script divided by was just a clever marketing ploy by Netscape Communications. It was initially called LiveScript but when Sun Microsystems released Java and it became very popular, Netscape renamed their scripting language to JavaScript. JavaScript runs on the browser client and does not require any server software. Thus, it is a client-side scripting language. Since all execution takes place on the browser, JavaScript is responsible for most of the interactivity on a web page. Image change or text color change on mouse over creating mouse trails are all possible through JavaScript. The language has also been widely used for basic form validation. This seems logical, as it is better to validate a form on the client side than to make several trips to the server. JavaScript is commonly embedded inside the HTML page and is thus visible to the visitor. JavaScript can also be written to run on a server and this is based on the ASP model promoted by Microsoft. Java developed by Sun Microsystems. Java is a very powerful, object-oriented language. A lot many platform dependency issues have been ironed out with the advent of Java. Thus, Java programs for Unix can be made to run on Windows or the Mac system with little or no effort. Much development is taking place on the Java front with new arrivals like Java Beans, Extended Java Beans, and Java applications for various databases and XML. Using Java servlets one can also develop dynamic Java server pages JSP. Java can also be seen on the internet in the form of applets embedded in an HTML page. Applets are small Java programs that run on a Java-compatible browser. VBScript VBScript is a client-based language that runs only on the Internet Explorer and quite naturally has been developed by Microsoft. Though, the browser markup share of Internet Explorer has steadily risen and overtaken that of Netscape, it is still not advisable to use VBScript as a client-side language for web pages. I would prefer to use JavaScript or Script, if you like as it runs on all popular web browsers. Netscape, Opera, Mozilla and the Internet Explorer. However, VBScript is very often used for developing active server pages discussed below. GASP, Active Server Pages. Active Server Pages is a technology promoted by Microsoft. The ASP utilizes some special tags, which can be embedded in the HTML code to generate dynamic web pages. GASP scripts run on the server. Typically, 
iOS on Windows NT. ASP pages carry the .asp extension that differentiates them from plain HTML pages and instructs the web server to pass the pages through the ASP interpreter. You can use VBScript, JavaScript slash JScript or a combination of the two to write ASP pages. The great advantage in using ASP is the ease of maintenance of the website. However, the downside is that you become too dependent on Microsoft technologies. PHP Open Source Great Development Environment PHP is a cult. This has been the answer of open source programmers to Microsoft's ASP. PHP not only carries all the goodness of ASP but also is more secure and handles databases more easily. It is a known fact that PHP on Apache web server runs faster than ASP. PHP code is embedded inside the HTML page and can't link to databases to generate dynamic HTML content. Furthermore, PHP scripts can be made to run on any operating system with little or no modification. XML, Extensible Markup Language The Extensible Markup Language is a web page developing language that enables programmer to create customized tags. These customized tags can provide the much-needed functionality not available with HTML. XML documents can be accessed using JSP, PHP, etc. There are several other languages on the internet such as Perl, Python, the RML virtual reality modeling, language, talk, etc., which I have not discussed here. You can search for them on your favorite search engine. Types of internet connections. As technology grows, so does our need for bigger, better and faster internet connections. Over the years the way content is presented via the web has also changed drastically. Ten years ago being able to center, bold, and produce text in different colors on a webpage was something to admire. Today, flash, animations, online gaming, streaming HD video, database-driven websites, e-commerce, and mobile applications be the own name but a few gray standards. The need for speed has changed the options available to consumers and businesses alike in terms of how and how fast we can connect to the Internet. The connection speeds listed below represent a snapshot of general average to maximum speeds at the time of publication. This is no doubt will change over time and internet connection speeds also vary between internet service providers ISP. Analog, dialed up internet access, also called dialed up access, an analog internet connection is both economically and slow. Using a modem connected to your PC. Users connect to the internet when the computer dials a phone number which is provided by your ISP and connects to the network. Dialed up is an analog connection. Because data is sent over an analog, public switched telephone network, the modem converts received analog data to digital and vice versa. Because dial up access uses normal telephone lines, the quality of the connection is not always good and data rates are limited. Typical dialed up connection. Speeds range from 2400 bps to 56 kbps. Today, analog has been widely replaced by broadband, cable and DSL, ISDN, Integrated Services Digital Network. Integrated Services Digital Network ISDN is an international communications standard for sending voice, video, and data over digital telephone lines or normal telephone wires. Typical ISDN speeds range from 64 kbps to 128 kbps. The ISDN, broadband by SDN. Broadband by SDN is similar in function to ISDN but it transfers data over fiber optic telephone lines, not normal telephone wires. So that is the physical transport backbone of the ISDN. Broadband by SDN has not been widely implemented. DSLV Digital Subscriber Line DSL is frequently referred to as an whole with ESON divided by connection because it uses existing to wire copper telephone line connected to the premise so service is delivered simultaneously with wired telephone service. It will not buy up your phone line as an analog dial up connection does. The two main categories of DSL for home subscribers are called ADSL and SDSL. All types of DSL technologies are collectively referred to as XDSL. XDSL connection speeds range from 128 kbps to 9 mbps.
ADSL, Basimetric Digital Subscriber Line. ADSL is the most commonly deployed types of DSL in North America. Short for Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line ADSL supports data rates of from 1.5 to 9 Mbps when receiving data known as the downstream rate and from 16 to 640 Kbps when sending data known as the upstream rate. ADSL requires a special ADSL modem. ADSL plus 2 ADSL extension an extension to ADSL broadband technology that provides subscribers with significantly faster download speeds when compared to traditional ADSL connections. ADSL Plus 2 works in the same fashion. As ADSL a special filter is installed on a subscriber's telephone line to split existing copper telephone line spots between regular telephone voice and ADSL Plus 2. ADSL 2 Plus service is most commonly offered in highly populated metropolitan areas and subscribers must be in close geographical locations to the provider's central office to receive ADSL 2 plus service SDSL symmetric digital subscriber line short for symmetric digital subscriber line SDSL is a technology that allows more data to be sent over existing copper telephone lines pops SDSL supports data rates up to 3 MBPs SDSL works by sending Digital pulses in the high frequency area of telephone wires and cannot operate simultaneously with voice connections over the same wires. SDSL requires a special SDSL modem. SDSL is called symmetric because it supports the same data rates for upstream and downstream traffic. VDSL, very high DSL. Very high DSL DSL is a DSL technology that offers fast data rates over relatively short distances via the shorter the distance the faster the connection rate. Cable Broadband Internet Connection Through the use of a cable modem you can have a broadband internet connection that is designed to operate over cable TV lines. Cable internet works by using TV channel space for data transmission, with certain channels used for downstream transmission, and other channels for upstream transmission. Because the coaxial cable used by cable TV provides much greater bandwidth than telephone lines. A cable modem can be used to achieve extremely fast access. Cable providers typically implement a cap to limit capacity and accommodate more customers. Cable speeds range from 512 kbps to 20 mbps. Wireless Internet Connections Wireless Internet, or wireless broadband is one of the newest Internet connection types. Instead of using telephone or cable networks for your Internet connection, you use radio frequency bands. Wireless Internet provides an always-on connection which can be accessed from anywhere v as long as you geographically within a network coverage area. Wireless access is still considered to be relatively new, and it may be difficult to find a wireless service provider in some areas. It is typically more expensive and mainly available in metropolitan areas. The one lines the least line the one lines are a popular least line option for businesses connecting to the internet and for internet service providers ISPs connecting to the internet backbone. It is a dedicated phone connection. Supporting data rates of 1.544 Mbps. The one line actually consists of 24 individual channels, each of which supports 64 bits per second. Each 64 bit flash second channel can be configured to carry voice or data traffic. Most telephone companies allow you to buy just one or some of these individual channels. This is known as fractional B1 access. B1 lines support speeds of 1.5 for 4 Mbps. Fractional B1 speeds are 64 kbps per channel up to 1.5 for 4 Mbps depending on number of least channels. Bonded B1 A bonded B1 is two or more D1 lines that have been joined bonded together to increase bandwidth. Where a single D1 provides approximately 1.5 Mbps, two bonded B1s provide 3 Mbps or 46 channels. For voice or data, two bonded B1s allow you to use the full bandwidth of 3 Mbps where two individual B1s can still only use a maximum of 1.5 Mbps at one time. To be bonded the D1 must run into the same router at the end, meaning they must run to the same ISP. Typical bonded B1 to bonded B1 lines. Speed is around 3 Mbps. D3 lines V dedicated least line. 
USB 3 lines are dedicated phone connections supporting data rates of about 43 to 45 Mbps. It twists. The popular least line option. The T3 line actually consists of 672 individual channels, each of which supports 64 kbps. V3 lines are used mainly by internet service providers ISPs connecting to the internet backbone and for the backbone itself. Typical V3 supports speeds ranging from 43 to 45 Mbps. OC3, Optical Carrier. Short for Optical Carrier, Level 3 of is used to specify the speed of fiber optic networks conforming to the SOTNET standard. OC3 is typically used as a fiber optic backbone for large networks with large voice, data, video, and traffic needs. Speeds are 155.5 to Mbps, or roughly the speed of 101 lines. Internet over satellite. Internet over satellite IOS allows the user to access the internet via a satellite that orbits the Earth. A satellite is placed at a static point above the Earth's surface, in a fixed position. Because of the enormous distances signals must travel from the Earth up to the satellite and back again, IOS is slightly slower than high-speed terrestrial connections over copper or fiber optic cables. Typical Internet over Satellite connection speed standard IP services average around 490 to up to 512 kbps. Types of IP address and its requirements. IP addresses are basically of two types. 1. Static IP address. 2. Shared IP address. An IP address is a 32-bit number that identifies the computer on the Internet. Every website on the Internet is found not by its domain name but by its IP address. When someone types the address, www.xyz.com it is translated into an IP address and then the computer is directed to that IP address which is a website. Now every single website has an IP address specifically allocated to it. If every site assigned a separate IP address then there could be a problem with running out of IP addresses so a lot of the sites on the server use a single IP address for multiple sites. Thus, using more than one site on an IP address is called a shared IP address. If a site has its own IP address and shares with no one else, it is called a static IP address. You can always access a site which has a static IP address by using its IP address alone, but you cannot Access a site using a shared IP address by typing in the IP address alone because when you type in a shared IP address you arrive at the server but the server does not know which site you are looking for. As you have not told it which domain name you want. Requirement of static IP address. 1. The main reason to have a static IP address for your site is that you can use SSL encryption on a static IP address only. In order to transmit sensitive data over the internet, it must be encrypted to prevent someone from intercepting the information. 2. In case if the site needed the anonymous FTP access anyone can download files of the site. The site needs to have a static IP address. Other than these two reasons there is no need for a site to have its own IP address. Types of Internet Protocol Internet Protocols Several protocols are used on the internet including Electronic Mail Email File Transfer Protocol FTP, HTTP World Wide Web News for US Net Gopher and Telnet. Each of these has its own standard and usage. Electronic Mail Included in the email protocol are three distinct protocols. SMTP Simple Mail Transfer Protocol IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol and POP3 Post Office Protocol 3. SMTP is a protocol used for sending mail while IMAP and POP3 are used for receiving almost all internet service providers support all three protocols. However the most popular setup for most providers is to use SMTP for sending mail while using POP3 for receiving file transfer protocol. File transfer protocol or FTP is a means of transferring a file from one computer to another. FTP is Commonly used for uploading a web page to a web server so that it may be seen on the World Wide Web. A special program, called a client, is usually needed to use FTP. HTTP World Wide Web. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP.
is the protocol used by web server to allow web pages to be shown in a web browser. If you look up into the address bar of your web browser, the place where you type in the address that you want to visit, it has the prefix OHP colon slash slash divided by in front of the address. Because most web browsers are capable of FTP as well as viewing web pages, the HTTP tells the browser what kind of information to expect. News for Youth Net Network News Transfer Protocol Then NTP is used for serving Usenet posts. Usenet is similar to the forums that many websites have. Usenet has forums that are dedicated to specific companies as well as forums that have a wide range of topics. Usenet is divided into several areas. Some of the forums that are included in Usenet are Comp for discussion of computer related topics, SCI for discussion of scientific subjects. Rec for discussion of recreational activities e.g. games and hobbies and talk. For discussion of contentious issues such as religion and politics. Gopher. Another tool of the internet is Gopher, a menu-based program that enables you to browse for information without knowing where the material is located. It lets you search a list of resources and then sends the material to you. Telnet. Telnet lets you log into a remote computer just as you would if you were there. So any commands that you would be able to run from the remote computer if you were sitting in front of it, you would be able to run from the computer you logged in from. Web browser types. Web browsers are software installed on your PC. To access the web you need web browsers, such as Netscape Navigator, Microsoft Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. Currently you must be using any sort of web browser while you are navigating through my site. Tutorialspoint.com. On the web, when you navigate through pages of information this is commonly known as web browsing or web surfing. There are for leading web browsers, Explorer, Firefox, Netscape and Safari but there are many others. Browsers available. You might be interested in knowing complete browser statistics. Now we will see these browsers in bit more detail. While developing the site, we should try to make it compatible to as many browsers as possible. Especially, the site should be compatible to major browsers like Explorer, Firefox, Netscape, Opera and Safari. Internet Explorer Internet Explorer IE is a product from software giant Microsoft. This is the most commonly used browser in the universe. This was introduced in 1995 along with Windows 95 launch and it has passed Netscape popularity in 1998. Netscape Netscape is one of the original web browsers. This is what Microsoft designed Internet Explorer to compete against. Netscape and IE comprise the major portion of the browser market. Netscape was introduced in 1994. Mozilla Mozilla is an open source web browser, designed for standards compliance, performance and portability. The development and testing of the browser is coordinated by providing discussion forums, software engineering tools, releases and bug tracking. Browsers based on Mozilla code is the second largest browser family on the internet today, representing about 30% of the internet community. Firefox Firefox is a new browser derived from Mozilla. It was released in 2004 and has grown to be the second most popular browser on the internet. Opera Opera is smaller and faster than most other browsers, yet it is full featured, fast, user-friendly, with keyboard interface, multiple windows, zoom functions, and more Java and non-Java enabled versions available. Ideal for newcomers to the internet, school children, handicap and as a front end for Cedrum. And kiosks. Difference between intranet, extranet and internet. Intranet is shared content accessed by members within a single organization. Extranet is shared content accessed by groups through cross enterprise boundaries. Internet is global communication accessed through the web. For better comprehension, take a look at this drawing. Summary. The internet, extranets, and intranets all rely on the same TCP/IP technologies. However, they are 
different in terms of the levels of access they allow to various users inside and outside the organization. And the size of the network. An intranet allows for restricted access to only members of an organization. An extranet expands that access by allowing non-members such as suppliers and customers to use company resources. The difference between the internet and extranets is that while the extranet allows limited access to non-members of an organization, the internet generally allows everyone to access all network resources. Intranet. This is a network that is not available to the world outside of the internet. If the internet network is connected to the internet, the internet will reside behind a firewall and, if it allows access from the internet, will be an extranet. The firewall helps to control access between the internet and internet too. Permit access to the internet only to people who are members of the same company or organization. In its simplest form, an internet can be set up on a network PC without any PC on the network having access via the internet network to the internet. For example, consider an office with a few PCs and a few printers all networked together. The network would not be connected to the outside world. On one of the drives of one of the PCs there would be a directory of web pages that comprise the internet. Other PCs on the network could access this internet by pointing their browser Netscape or Internet Explorer to this directory, for example, u colon backslash inert backslash index dot htm dot. From then onwards they would navigate around the internet in the same way as they would get around the internet. Extranet. An extranet is actually an intranet that is partially accessible to authorized outsiders. The actual server, the computer that serves up the web pages will reside behind the firewall. The firewall helps to control access between the intranet and internet permitting access to the intranet only to people who are suitably authorized. The level of access can be set to different levels for individuals or groups of outside users. The access can be based on a username and password or an IP address unique set of numbers, such as 209.33.27.100 that defines the computer that the user is on. Internet. This is the worldwide network of computers accessible to anyone who knows their internet protocol IP. Address. The IP address is a unique set of numbers such as 209.33.27.100 that defines the computer rows. Location. Most will have access to computer using the name such as p colon slash slash www.asida.com. Before this name and computer can be accessed, the name needs to be resolved translated into an IP address. To do this, your browser, for example, Netscape or Internet Explorer, will access a domain name server DNS computer to look up the name and return an IP address, or issue an error message to indicate that. The name was not found. Once your browser has the IP address it can access the remote computer. The actual server the computer that serves up the web pages does not reside behind the firewall. If it did, it would be an extra net. It may implement security at a directory level so that access is via a username and password, but otherwise all the information is accessible. To see typical security have a look at a sample secure directory. The username is drive and the password is whose both username and password are case sensitive. Microsoft Office Introductions Microsoft Word is the world's leading word processing application. It can be used to work with a wide range of documents like letters, memos, newsletters, forms and now with blogs to with Word 2007. Screen Layout Menus when you begin to explore Word 2007 you will notice a new look to the menu bar. There are three features that you should remember as you work within Word 2007, the Microsoft Office button, the Quick Access Toolbar, and the Ribbon. These three features contain many of the functions that were in the menu of previous versions of Word. The functions of these three features will be more fully explored. Below, the Microsoft Office button. Unit. Microsoft Word, 2007 Microsoft Office Button Quick Accesses Toolbar Ribbon View Choice Microsoft Office The Microsoft Office button performs many of the functions that were located in the file menu of older versions of Word. 
This button allows you to create a new document. Open an existing document. Save. Or save as. Print. Send through email or fax publish or close. The ribbon. The ribbon is the panel at the top portion of the document. It has seven tags. Home. Insert. Page. Layout. References. Mailings. Review. And view that contain many new and existing features of Word. Each tab is divided into groups. The groups are logical collections of features designed to perform functions that you will utilize in developing or editing your Word document. Commonly used features are displayed on the ribbon. To view additional features within each group, click on the arrow at the bottom right of each group. Each of the tabs contains the following tools. Home, clipboard, fonts, paragraph, styles, and editing. Insert, pages, tables, illustrations, links, heater and footer, text, and symbols. Page layout, themes, page setup, page background, paragraph, arrange, references, table of contents, footnote, citation and bibliography, captions, index, and table of authorities, mailings, create, start mail merge, write and insert fields, preview results, finish, review, proofing, comments, tracking, changes, compare, protect, view, Document views, show slash hide, zoom, window, macros, create new documents. There are several ways to create new documents, open an existing documents, and save documents in Word. Click on Microsoft Office button and click new or press Ctrl plus and press the Ctrl key while pressing the undivided by on the keyboard. You will notice that when you click on the Microsoft Office button and click new, you have many choices about the types of documents you can create. If you wish to start from a blank document, click blank. If you wish to start from a template you can browse through your choices on the left, see the choices on center screen, and preview the selection on the right screen. Opening an existing document, click on Microsoft Office button and click open, or press Ctrl plus O on the keyboard. If you have recently used document you can click B and click the name of the document in the recent documents section of the window. Insert picture of recent docs. Saving the document. Click B and click save or save as remember, if you're sending the document to someone who does not have Office 2007, you will need to click the click save as and click Word 97 to 2003 document or press Ctrl plus S on the keyboard. Renaming the document. Click the Microsoft Office button and find the file you want to rename. Right click the document name with the mouse and select Rename from the shortcut menu. Type the new name for the file and press Enter key. Working on multiple documents A. Several documents can be opened simultaneously if you are typing or editing multiple documents at once. All open documents will be listed in the View tab of the ribbon when you click on Switch Windows. The current document has a check mark beside the file name. Select another open document to view it. Document view. There are many ways to view a document in Word. Print layout. This is a view of the document as it would appear when printed. It includes all tables, text, graphics, and images. Full screen reading. This is full view length view of a document. Good for viewing two pages at a time. Web layout. This is a view of the document as it would appear in web browser. Outline. This is an outline form of the document in the form of bullets. Draft. This view does not display pictures or layouts, just text. To view a document in different forms, click the document views shortcuts at the button of the screen. Or, click on view tab on the ribbon. Click on appropriate document view. Close a document. To close a document click click close. Editing the document. Formatting text, typing and inserting text. To enter text, just start typing. The text will appear where the blinking cursor is located. Move the cursor by using the arrow buttons on the keyboard or positioning the mouse and clicking the left button. The keyboard shortcuts listed below are also helpful when moving through the text of a document. Move action key stroke. Beginning of the line home. End of the line end. Top of the document control plus home. End of the document control plus end. Selecting the text. To change any attributes of text it must be highlighted first. 
select the text by dragging the mouse over the desired text while keeping the left mouse button depressed, or hold down the shift key on the keyboard while using the arrow buttons to highlight the text. The following table contains shortcuts for selecting a portion of the text. Selection technique. Whole word double click within the word. Whole paragraph triple click within the paragraph. Several words or line drag the mouse over the words, or hold down shift plus arrow key. Entire document show see edit a slept a slept all from ribbon or press control plus a. Inserting additional text. Text can be inserted in a document at any point using of the following methods. Type text. Put your cursor where you want to add the text and begin typing. Copy and paste text. Highlight the text you want to copy and right click and click copy. Put your cursor where you want the text in the document and right click and click paste. Cut and paste text. Highlight the text you wish to copy and right click and click cut. Put your cursor where you want the text in the document and right click and click paste. Drag text. Highlight the text you wish to move. Click on UV and drag it to the place where you want the text in the document. You will notice that you can also use the clipboard group on the ribbon. Cut Ctrl plus X. Copy Ctrl plus C. Paste Ctrl plus V. Rearranging block of text. To rearrange text within a document, you can utilize the clipboard group on the home tab of the ribbon. Insert picture of clipboard group labeled. Move text, cut and paste or drag as shown above. Copy text, copy and paste as above or use the clipboard group on the ribbon. Paste text, use Ctrl plus V or use the clipboard group to paste, paste special, or paste as hyperlink. Deleting block of text. Use the backspace or delete keys on the keyboard to delete text. Backspace will delete text to left of the cursor and delete will erase text to the right. To delete a large selection of text, highlight it using any of the methods outlined above and press the delete key. Search and replace text. To find a particular word or phrase in a document, click Find on the editing group on the ribbon. To find and replace a word or phrase in the document, click Replace on the editing group of the ribbon. You can use Ctrl plus F for Find and Ctrl plus H for Replace. Undo changes A. Click on the Undo button of Quick Access Toolbar. You can use Ctrl plus Z for Undo changes. Styles A. The style is a format enhancing tool that includes font typefaces, font size, effects bold, italics, underline, etc., colors and more. You will notice that on the home tab of Ribbon, that you have several areas that will control the style of your document, font, paragraph, and styles. Microsoft Office. Change font typeface and size. To change font typeface, Click the arrow next to the font name and choose a font. To change the font size, click on arrow next to the font size and choose the appropriate size, or click the increase or decrease font size button. Font styles and effects. Font styles are predefined formatting options that are used to emphasize text. They include bold, italic, and underline. To add these to text, Select the text and clip the font styles included on the font group of ribbon door. Select the text and right click to display the font tools. Change text color A. To change the text color, select the text and clip the color button included on the font group of the ribbon, or highlight the text and right click and choose the colors tool. Select the color by clicking the down arrow next to the font color button. Highlight text A. Highlighting text allows you to use emphasized text as you would if you had the maker. To highlight text, select the text. Click the highlight button on the font group of the ribbon, or select the text and right click and select the highlight tool. To change the color of the highlighter, click on down arrow next to the highlight button. Copy formatting A. If you have already formatted text the way you want it and would like another portion of the document to have the same formatting, you can copy the formatting. To copy the formatting, do the following. Select the text with the formatting you want to copy. Copy the format of the text selected by clicking the Format Painter button on the clipboard group of the Home tab. Apply the copied format by selecting the text and clicking on it.